Okay, so in class we were talking about these exponential functions and we um, started out just superficially saying that we're going to keep this very simple and we're going to give f of x is equal to a to the power of x where a cannot equal 1. I do want to tell you that later on we're going to extend this out and we're going to have actually a times b to the x power. But right now we have a base of a and there's four quick questions that I want to cover with you that I think are extremely important to you, and I hope you're going to take meticulous notes. I'll try to keep this really short, but I want you to work through this on your calculator with me because I want you to see what this looks like. First off, what does the graph look like for a is greater than 1? What does the graph look like for a is greater than 0 but less than 1? Right? That's fractional values. And what are the issues with a is less than 0? What happens if the base is negative? What kind of issue does that present to us? And then lastly, and I think three and four go together, what are the technology pitfalls of all of this? So let's try to work through this kind of one, two, three, four. So let's start with, um, let's go to your graphing function. Remember, it's an exponential function, so let's, let's say x is, I'm sorry, a is greater than, greater than one, so let's have a two, two to the power of x. Uh, before you hit enter on your calculator, what do you think it's going to look like? Is it going to look parabolic? And if it's not parabolic, what is it? And, and why does it take the shape that it takes? And here's some answer to your question. So <coughs> it seems to me that as x increases, this becomes very, very steep. Uh, the function seems to pass through, through the point 0, 1. And I want you to kind of answer that question. Why does it pass through 0, 1? And the answer to that question might be answered by saying, what is 2 to the 0 power? And also this, I want you to know that this function, as we go, as we approach negative infinities, we're approaching, well, we're approaching a height of zero. We're not going to make it under the x-axis for now. So, so there's a quick answer. Let's take a look at just another one really quick. Let's maybe take five to the power of x and see what do the two functions have in common and possibly what, what, are, the, what are the differences between them. Well, that's very interesting, isn't it? Why is it that they both they both pass through the point zero one and answer that question again by saying what is five to the zero power? This is something that I hope that we're figuring out. Again, as x increases, the the height seems to approach infinity, it just skyrockets here. As we approach negative infinity, look what happens to the green function. The green function seems to be asymptotic to the x-axis. That is, that the height seems to be approaching zero. It looks. This is just a, a visual effect. I'm sorry. This thing does not cross the x-axis. It does not go below zero. As a matter of fact, it never makes it to zero. So, okay, so that's that. Let's take a look at now, answer the second question. What happens if we have a fractional value? So uh, let's go to that and let's insert another set of graphs. And let's say, I don't know, uh, 0.5 to the power of x. And hit enter. Well, that seems to be quite different, doesn't it? As we approach negative infinity, the height seems to be going to infinity. But as we approach positive infinity, the height seems to be going to zero. Why is that true? I think I would say to you, uh, test some things. Maybe um, let's see if we can get to a. Let's see if we can get to a. Let's see if we can get to a view. Let's see if we can look at a table here. Look what happens here. Here, x is 0. As x increases, look, we go to 0. 0.5. Because what is 1 half to the, to the first power but 1 half? What is 1 half to the second power? It's 1, one squared over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth, etc. But as we go backwards, right, as we increase the x value, what happens? These values increase because what's going to happen? We're going to have a negative exponent at the bottom, and it, we're going to have to take its reciprocal, and we're going to get lo these large numbers. So that's what it's accounting for this. Okay. So hopefully we have some idea of this. I tried to keep it very, very simple for you to, uh, to look at these functions. We're going to look at them more in depth later. But now I want to, if you don't mind, I want to go back here and I want to look at this. I said to you that there's an issue in the form that we have it now. We just have base a to the power of x. And I said to you that a, that a can't be negative. So I'm saying, well, what would happen if it was? So let's try that. Let's take negative... You know what, let's, here, this is technology pitfall. Let's make sure that I'm asking the calculator the question I want to ask. First, I'm going to do it the way I know the calculator wants to see it. And I'm going to take parentheses, negative 2 
close the parentheses. And I'm going to take that thing to the power of x. To the power of x. And then I'm going to move over here a little bit. I'm just going to store this. into control store. And if you don't mind, I'm going to call this f of x. So here's f. f of x. I'm going to hit enter here. And it's done. So let's try a couple of values. A lot of values are going to work, and you're going to be sitting there going, I don't see the issue here. There's no problem. But what if I took this to the one-half power? Because if I took this to the one-half power, wouldn't I be asking the calculator to tell me what the square root of negative 2 is and what's true about the square root of negative 2? And I, hopefully that answers the question. So let's try that. Let's take, let's take f of one-half. So f of 0.5. Right? And remember that one-half power is the square root of. And, oh, non-real result. For example, if the software is in real setting, the square root of a negative number is invalid. Well, of course it is because there's, you can't take the square root. You can't take an even root of a negative number because no number times itself is a negative number. So there's, an, there's the issue with that. Now, what I do want to show you is this, that you can make your calculator, you could trick your calculator into thinking you're saying something that you're not thinking. This is bad voodoo. Don't do this. I'll put negative 2 here, right, to the power of x. And then again, I'm going to hit, make I'm here, I'm going to hit control store, and I'm going to call this g of x, just the difference being the way I type this thing in. And I want you to take a good look at this because hit, hit into here. It's not showing you this right now here, but what this really is, I believe this is thinking is that g of x is negative 1 times 2 to the power of x, where this one I forced it into saying, no, I mean negative 2 to the power of x. So look what happens here. If I take g of, g of, da, 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 g of 0.5. Now remember, last time I did this, thinking that I typed in the same equation, I got an answer. I got an answer, non-real result. Error, error, error. But look what happens here. Here I get a, I get an answer here. The square root of 2 happens to be this value right here. It happens to be that value right there. However, it's not negative. What it's saying is it's the opposite. What it's reading this is the opposite of the square, of the square root of 2. And I'll show you that you get the same answer here. I'll take the, whoops, sorry, let me see if I can do this. The opposite. Nope, I don't want that either. Hang in there with me for a second. The opposite of the square root of 2. All right, so that's going to, of course, give me that's a good answer, actually. So if I control enter, get rid of it. Aren't these the two same answers? So when I typed in this g of x function up here, it took it as if I was saying the opposite of 2 to the power of x, where this one, it knew clearly. So this is a really bad technology pitfall. You have to remember that about your calculator. For example, if you were going to take uh, negative 2 squared, negative 2 squared, and negative 4, how is negative 2 squared negative 4? Your calculator believes that you believe that what you're trying to ask is, what is the opposite of 2 squared? If you want to ask your calculator clearly, you're saying, no, 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 I want to know what what negative 2 squared is. It, type it in here. There's your answer. So some technology pitfalls. So hopefully we've answered these questions. One, if A is greater than 1, what does the graph look like? What's its general shape? Two, if A is greater than 0 but less than 1, what does the graph of the function look like? Three, why, in the form that we're in right now, where A is the base, why is it a bad thing that A is a negative number? What complications can it cause? Well, I think that we've answered those questions. Hopefully, you took good notes in this video, and you've got to be practicing with these calculators. The more you practice, the better you'll get. So keep working.